What's going on guys, it's Anthony. Today, I'm going to be my preview video and my breakdown for what I think the Eagles need to do to win against the Redskins this weekend. I'm sorry, I'm just a little bit irritated right now, but okay. Penalties. This team was called on 14 penalties last week. 14. Compared to the Lions with two. The Lions are the most penalized team, especially going into last week's game. And I always, I, I continue to say it, the game was really shifted towards the Lions in an effort to make the Lions win. But that doesn't, that does not change anything. The fact is, we needed to be a better team, and we weren't the better team. Regardless of how many penalties were called on the Eagles that either shouldn't have been or just did not happen at all. You can even hear it when the broadcasters were talking about it. They didn't see anything half the time. And half the time, they even called out some freaking Lions penalties that never were called on. And why does this matter going into next week's game? Because if we want to win, we can't be penalized as much as we did last week. We were penalized 14 times. I'll put a lot of emphasis on that. 14. That is not how you win a football game. And on top of that, this defense going into last week's game, we were averaging 9 points a game. 9 points per game. We allowed 21 points in the first 3 possessions the Lions had. That's not how we're going to win. That is not how we're going to win. Because, let me just tell you this. If we let Kirk Cousins, Deshaun Jackson, Pierre Garçon, if Jordan Reed is available to play, Jordan Reed to run up and down on FedEx Field and kill the Eagles, there's no hope for this team. I'm going to be real with you. Because if we get beat by the Red, it, like, it's not even that if we get beat by them. It's if we get destroyed by them, which I don't think we will. But if we allow a, a lot of points, there is room for concern. I was concerned last week because the Eagles allowed 21 points on three straight possessions of the Lions in the first quarter and a half after we just got done celebrating off a of bye week and a 34-3 destruction of the Pittsburgh Steelers. Where did that defense go? The offense was able to move. We didn't do too well offensively in that first quarter. The first half, was, all in all, was just really sloppy. But where was our defense that entire first half? Because if we want to win, we need to have our defense playing all four quarters, not two quarters. Because the second half, our stats were we allowed 45 total yards, four first downs, and only three points. That's how we lost playing that well in that second freaking half and there was a of course I won't rule out Ryan Matthews and his fumble I will not but I'm just saying there's more to it than Ryan Matthews fumbling we weren't supposed to be in a position to have to mount a comeback from what was it freaking 21 to 3 21 to 7 whatever it was 21 to 10 I don't remember I don't want to remember because that's not how we play that's not how we should play. And along with the defense needing to play better, offense. You need to utilize your tools a lot better. Now, I'm just... I went on a rant to myself last night when I was going to make this video, but I didn't. I didn't make the video last night. I was going to make it last night, but I didn't because I was really on edge and really upset overall about everything. Not just Eagles, but other stuff, but... We need to utilize our freaking tools better. Because let me just tell you this. Dorel Green Beckham needs to get that ball more. Nelson Aguilar, he can be used as a deep threat, but we can't use him the way we did. Actually, excuse me, no. Josh Huff should be used as a deep threat. He's our quickest wide, <clears throat> excuse me, wide receiver. He's our quickest wide receiver. We use him as a running back, which does work, but it's going to catch on. People are going to understand what we're doing, and they are going to stop us and make us lose yardage. They already did last week with the Lions. Josh Huff, you can run off the field, and you can make a catch. I feel if Carson Wentz throws it up to you, you can make that catch. 
Nelson Aguilar, when he gets the ball in his hands, he can be pretty reliable. Doriel Green Beckham needs to get the ball in his hand more. Jordan Matthews just needs to do what he needs to do. Tight ends. Where were they against Detroit? Brett Selleck, I didn't see on the field at all. If I did, he was probably blocking. Zach Ertz, the only time I saw him catch a ball was the last drive of the first half when we were trying to score a touchdown, but we kept getting penalized on these big plays that were keeping us going. And if we had gotten a touchdown on that drive, who knows, maybe we would have won. And that goes back to the penalty issue that I just talked about. But where were these tight ends? Trey Burton came in, in the into the third quarter. He was only targeted like three times on like three consecutive plays, made a catch. The other two, he was overthrown. You could see him really trying his hardest to make a catch, but he wasn't able to make it. And then tight ends were non-existent for the rest of that game. Where were they at? It doesn't make any sense to me. I'll, I, I get if you're using them as blocking because, I, I mean, now with Lane Johnson out for the next 10 games until week 16 when we play the freaking Giants on Thursday Night Football, we're going to need as many blockers as we can get. Because that rookie filling in Lane Johnson, he's not going to be able to do it all, especially against teams like Minnesota or when we go to play Dallas or when we go to play Green Bay. He's not going to be able to do it all. He's going to need assistance. At that freaking line, that whole entire line is, that whole entire offensive line is gonna need some more help, and that's where Brett Selleck and Zach Ertz come in. But we need to see more of those tight ends. Trey Burn, he is itching to get back out there and make big plays. I really like what I'm seeing with Trey Burton. We need to use him more. Zach Ertz, he's just got off of nursing a rib injury. Bring him back in. If he's healthy, he plays. You can't sit him, or have him block all freaking game. We've been predicting him to have such a breakout season and do so good, he hasn't done it yet. Most of the reason why is because Chip Kelly didn't really know how to use his team. And now we just need to utilize him properly. And before I even move on to anything else, running backs. Ryan Matthews, now this is my predict this is my opinion on this entire fumble, the entire thing that sparked the whole thing that happened over the weekend on my channel. If you if you watch my videos, you know what I'm referring to. It wasn't his fault. Yes, he fumbled it. Yes, he was holding it in the wrong arm. He wasn't protecting it properly. Yes. But should he have been in that position? No. Ryan Matthews is not the kind of running back to run a LaShawn McCoy play to the outside. He's not that quick. Over the summer, he gained so much muscle and more weight that he didn't need to that he's slower than what he was. And he knows that too. But let me tell you this. Doug Peterson should have either made a substitute and bring in Darren Sproles, Wendell Smallwood, Kenny on Bonner. These three quick, really good running backs that you have to hit that outside quicker and we wouldn't have fumbled that. Or just give Ryan Matthews the ball and run him up the gut. I don't want to say up the gut anymore because I felt like a broken record saying that all the time last year with DeMarco Murray. And who knows, if we had used DeMarco Murray properly, maybe he would still be here. Maybe we wouldn't have to worry with Ryan Matthews. But what I'm saying is that this was on the coach. Ryan Matthews shouldn't have been in that position. He shouldn't have been running the ball east and west. He should have been running north and south because that's how he runs. And the whole entire shit that happened with with the whole how do you fumble and everything, that's what really takes me off and that's what really got me thinking about it. He shouldn't have been in that position. I'm not putting all the blame on him, but there is some blame to be on Ryan Matthews that game. And this is something that you... The, Doug Peterson has been really good at calling these plays and making the game plan and the strategy against these certain teams. What strategy did he have against the Lions last week? This is what he needs to do. He needs to utilize his tools properly like he did against Pittsburgh, freaking Chicago, freaking Cleveland. He needs to use these players a lot better. We're playing Washington. They may not be the best team, but they're a division rival, and they can always manage to beat us. They beat us three straight. We need to snap this losing streak. We need to take command in this division by winning this game. 
and you need to come up with an actual game plan and use your you use your freaking players properly. And I predict us to win this game, but if we don't win this game, I'm really concerned. Yeah, we'll be 3 and 2. We'll have 11 more games left. But even with 11 games, we lose this game to the Redskins. What does that make you think? Because literally, we've lost the past three straight against them. In the past two games that we've lost against them, actually, no, my, my mistake. Two of the last three games, one in Wa both in Washington, actually. 2014, they knocked us out of the playoffs. Last year, we lost them in Washington to start off the year. We were still in the division the entire way around, but it's say we actually beat the Redskins then, and we beat the Redskins later on in the year, week 16. We win the division. These little things. I don't want to be the victim of losing another division game that could cost us the division. Because that's what happened last year. That's what happened the year before when they knocked us out of the playoffs. We could win this game. We may not win against Minnesota the next week, but we can have a better chance at beating the Giants at MetLife. We own the Giants. We've swept them the past two seasons. And the freaking Cowboys, we own them in their home, on their home turf. Coach Peterson just needs to make these game plans, and they need to utilize his players better. Defense needs to actually show up early in the game. Offense needs to click early in the game. Special teams, you're not an issue. I'm not even worried about you. Penalties needs to go away. I want to see that team win on Sunday. If they don't, I will be very upset. Because that'll be a big reason for me to be upset when you lose to the Washington Redskins for a fourth straight time. That is what's going to get me upset. Because these Deadskins, they aren't good. They are nowhere near good. The Giants are better than them. The Redskins are better than them. We're for sure better than them. We gotta prove it. And this game, if we can win this game, doesn't matter if we can beat Minnesota next the week after that. We can take command in this division. Because guess who the Cowboys play? The Packers. And I don't think the Packers are going to let up a game against Dallas. I think they're going to win that game. And the Giants, they play Baltimore. They're on a two-game losing streak, and they need this win. I think they'll pull it off. We need to show the Redskins and this entire NFC East who the Eagles really are. Regardless if this is a freaking rebuilding season or not, I'm taking this game seriously. So should the Eagles. If they don't, and if they lose, who the hell knows what's going to happen, guys. I'll talk to you guys on Sunday night when I make my Eagles review video. Let's hope I'm not screaming. I don't want to be screaming. <laughs> I'll see you guys later. Hope you guys have a great rest of your set. Hope you guys have a great rest of your Friday night. I'm sorry.